So we are talking about complement system. We talked about the classical pathway. Now we are going to talk about the alternative pathway. The complement system can also be triggered without antigen antibody complexes. Even in the absence, there is a spontaneous conversion of C3 to C3B. So initially we talked about that you need C1 protein, which has protein complex, which has enzymatic activity, which is required to cleave C3 into C3B and C3A. Now I'm telling you that this can happen spontaneously also. Ordinarily, C3B is quickly inactivated because our body cells have inhibitory molecules, including sialic acid, which neutralizes C3B and prevents it from destroying our body cells. However, bacteria and other foreign materials that may get into the body lack these proteins. Of course, they are specific to our cells. C3 binds a protein called factor B forming a C3B BB complex which is also a C3 convertase which acts to, on other C3 to form C3BB and C3B complex which we already know is can also cleave C5 and it is therefore called C5 convertase and this can start when C5 has been cleaved it can start assembly of membrane attack complex and more C3B amplifying massive production of C3B. So this is the alternative pathway even in the absence of C1 protein that we saw in the classical pathway our body has devised another strategy to destroy the pathogens. C5B will bind, once it is cleaved, will bind C6, C7 and C8 and this will initiate the membrane attack complex and which will recruit ultimately C9 which will form these pores in the surface of the pathogen. So this is the alternative pathway. Now let's talk about another pathway, the lectin pathway. The lectin pathway is homologous to classical pathway but with the opsonin manning binding lectin and phycolins instead of C1Q. So C1Q is part of the classical pathway but not the lectin pathway or the alternative pathway. So let's see how this pathway works. This is activated by manin binding lectin to mannose residues on the pathogen surface which activates manin binding lectin associated serine proteases. So these proteases are abbreviated as MASP1 and MASP2 including MASP3. These proteases can split C4 into C4A and also C2 into C2A and C2B. I hope you remember what happens once these two molecules are cleaved. C2B and C4B, they join together, they settle on the surface of the pathogen and they are basically the C3 convertase, basically cleave C3 molecule into C3A and C3B. So rest is familiar to you. So after that has happened, C3B is formed, C5 will also be cleaved and the membrane attack complex will again be assembled. I am sure you are getting the idea that this, our immune system, our complement system, they are very, very dangerous if they are not regulated. They can also destroy our body parts. So how do we, what are the strategies to contain this system? There are at least 12 proteins that keep the complement system under tight control. Factor H, it is a protein. It removes BB from the alternative pathway. C3 convertase breaking the positive feedback loop. Factor 1 can inactivate C3B. C1 inhibitor binds to sites on activated C1R and C1S shutting down their proteolytic activity. When C1 is activated by antigen antibody complexes, there is only a brief interval during which it can cleave C4 and C2 before it is deactivated. 
So we have basically evolved this immune system to defend our bodies from invasion from other pathogens. So one of the themes of our immune system is we talked about is specificity and also diversity, memory, and also ability to, to contain it so it doesn't attack our cells. So many systems are in place to check that our immune system doesn't attack our own body parts. So this concludes our discussion of immune system and complement system. We'll talk about the next topic uh, in the next module.